Hi fellow believers in Christ. Um, today I want to talk about um, how to love people. I, I'm sure I don't know everything about how to love people, but during this last year the Lord has shown me some things, um, so I just wanted to share. Um, first of all, there's no way that you can love perfectly um, unless, unless your flesh is dead and crucified. As long as any part of your flesh is alive, you cannot love another person in a perfect way because some part of your flesh is going to um, interact with that per or how should I say, disturb that perfect love. Um, because, for instance, your flesh is the evil desires that you have uh, that of your your body and your soul um, so um, any kind of evil desire like um, say the need for attention if you had if you have a need for attention which is an evil desire it's not from the Lord um, if you're an attention seeker then that will cause you to do things toward other people that just suits your own needs. It, it makes people notice you, but it's not for their benefit. It's only for the benefit of your flesh. That's one example. Um, so as long as your flesh is alive in that area, um, you're always going to be doing things to get people's attention, but they won't benefit from it at all. And that isn't love. That's selfishness. Or say... Um, you, you have a lot of um, sexual desires, then of course you're going to take advantage of people periodically throughout your life um, because you'll want to gratify those desires, but you won't care anything about the person you're using to get those desires gratified. And that will def that is not love for sure, right? Um, or say... Um, Say your flesh is fearful. You're afraid of disappointing people. You're not afraid of disappointing God. You're afraid of disappointing man, which is something that a lot of people suffer from. Or um, you're afraid of not fitting in and being accepted by man. Um, something like that. So you're going to end up doing stuff where you're acting codependent and you're enabling people in a negative way and you're encouraging people in their sin because you don't want them to get mad at you and that is definitely not love because you are um, what you're doing doesn't help the other person at all it leads them further astray from the Lord because it, it protects them from the reality of the wrath of God and, and the majesty and the righteousness and the holiness of God and you're shielding them from that reality so you're not helping them out one bit they're going to keep being users and hateful people because you're enabling them to do that so um, and the part of your flesh that it satisfies is the part of your flesh that wants to be accepted and um, doesn't doesn't like conflict of any sort um, so that's, there's another example of how the flesh will prevent you from having perfect love toward people. Anytime that you're unable to love somebody in a perfect way, meaning that you can, you can perfectly forgive them, you can share the gospel with them openly, um, you can refrain from judging um, their soul. Um, now, we're, we are called to judge fruit but we're not called to judge people. So there's a difference. I talked about that in a previous video, but there is a difference between judging fruit, which identifies the person as either Christian or not Christian, and judging the person, which is something that only God can do. So if you're in the flesh, you'll judge the person. If you're in the spirit, you'll judge their fruit. Um, but anyway, anytime that we're in the flesh, 
there's no way that we can love that person perfectly, whoever that person is, whether it's a spouse or a child or your neighbor or a co-worker or somebody at church or an evil person who hurt you. Um, you can never love them perfectly if you're in the flesh because the flesh is going to interfere in one way or another. Um, and so... Um, Sometimes the flesh wants to control. And sometimes you may think you love somebody, but what you really love is controlling that person. And um, that's a trap that a lot of people fall into also. And they think they love the person, but what they really love is having charge over that person. And when they lose control, then somehow they don't, they don't like that person anymore. <laughs> And it's, there's no mystery to the Lord. He knows why all of a sudden you're not interested in them anymore. It's because you can't control them anymore. You lost control. And so now, now they don't mean anything to you. You know? So again, that's another example of how the flesh prevents perfect love. So if there's somebody who you can't forgive, that is the flesh. There's something in your flesh that's preventing you from being able to forgive. Um, if you can't share the gospel with somebody again it's your flesh your flesh is interfering and this is why Paul told us we have to cru one of the reasons we have to crucify the flesh and everything the flesh does is evil constantly um, and so you can't you can't be close to Jesus you can't repent of your sins you can't love people <laughs> when your flesh is alive it's it's always going to get in the way of that stuff so um, that's one thing the Lord's been teaching me is um, the only way to really love somebody um, is to crucify the flesh. Um, you just can't do it if the flesh is alive because you're going to want things. Your flesh will want things from people and your flesh will always be disappointed because it's not going to get what it wants um, in one way or another. You might get something you might get a few things from a person, but you'll never get everything you want from somebody. It, that, and, and I'm speaking about your flesh. Your flesh is never going get, to give, get everything it wants from somebody. So your flesh is always going to be disgruntled and disappointed, you know, because it didn't get all that it wanted. But if your flesh is dead, completely dead, um, then you're not thinking about what you can get out of that relationship. And then your thoughts are completely on what you can do to help the person that you're in a relationship with. And helping, sometimes leaving a person alone is a way of helping. But the Holy Spirit will direct you when you need to leave them alone. Um, but, you know, the Holy Spirit understands things that we don't understand. So sometimes he's going to tell us to do something that's a little bit weird. But it will be the best thing for that person, that other person. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing that, that love is not is um, love is not being a doormat or whoring yourself out to somebody. And we can emotionally whore ourselves out to people. Um, a lot of times parents in America do this for their children. They, they let their children use them for everything. And at, but they never hold their children accountable. They never share the gospel with their children. Um, they never teach their children discipline because they're afraid that their children won't like them anymore or something like that. Or they're, maybe they're afraid their children won't help them out when they're old. I don't know. But there could be all kinds of motives. But people um, often um, pour themselves out to their children. They also may do it in um, like a friendship relationship where you'll go to a ball game and do all kinds of things you don't really want to do, but, but you don't want to lose that friendship, so you do it anyway. And you aren't following the Holy Spirit because you aren't going and doing what the Holy Spirit wants you to do you're doing what your your best friend wants you to do. So see how that is um, not perfect love either um, because you're just pouring yourself out. Um, Jesus, if you'll notice, 
Jesus does not answer our prayers because he wants us to like him. And we don't have to do things for other people for that reason either. Jesus, it, he's, he's not a whore. He's not a doormat. Um, he's not something to be used. He's not a person to be used. He's not a fool. Um, and we don't have to be any of those things either because we follow Jesus. We're, we're called to be like Jesus. So, so we're not called to be fools. And um, we're not called to be enablers. So none of that stuff is real love because it's not helping the other person. It's, it's, it actually keeps the other person in sin. If you ignore Jesus long enough, he's going to start ignoring you. Not because he hates you, but because he's not controlling and he's not a manipulator. If you show him that you want him to leave you alone, he will. And that's why the Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. He's, Jesus doesn't kiss up to people who hate him. So we as followers of Jesus don't have to do that either. You know, he said himself, uh, don't cast your pearls before swine. They'll trample your pearls and then they'll turn around and trample you. And um, we never have to do that. We shouldn't do that. And we need discernment. So perfect love is sometimes letting a person go if that's what that person wants it's not trying to manipulate and keep them tied to your apron strings Jesus himself doesn't do that with anybody and perfect love doesn't control you can't control somebody into the kingdom of heaven because it's not allowed God himself will not do that and because God himself won't do it there's no way that you trying to do it is going to be a success some, some parents try to control their children into the kingdom of heaven. And that doesn't work any more than enabling their children does. And, um, you know, in a marriage relationship, um, when your flesh is dead, you don't get offended by the things that your spouse does. Um, it just doesn't offend you anymore. You, you may recognize it as an evil deed, um, but you're not hurt and incapable of recovery because your flesh is dead. It's your flesh that can't heal. Your spirit can always heal. So let that flesh be dead because it doesn't, it doesn't like to heal itself. It doesn't self-heal. It likes to be wounded. It likes to hold a grudge. The flesh likes to count wrongs. It's weak. The spirit, um, when you are walking in the spirit, that's when you have strength, the strength of Jesus Christ inside of you. You're not weak anymore, you know, because it's Jesus in you who is, who is strong. And he's not a wounded victim. He's the victor. So when Jesus is alive in you, you also are the victor um, because of Jesus in you. So you don't go around being wounded and hurt in everything that your spouse does. And you don't need your spouse. You don't look to your spouse for validation and um, acceptance and um, all that stuff. Because you, your identity is in Jesus Christ. And that's not just a catchphrase, it's a reality. When your flesh is dead, you can feel that reality, that, you're, that your identity really is in Jesus. It isn't in how other people treat you, not even in how your spouse treats you or your children treat you. Even if they disregard you, you still know who you are in Jesus. Before I became born again, um, all, the time, all the times that people had hurt me, um, I thought that that defined who I was. Um, and in a sense, it, it defined my flesh. It, defi it defined my flesh because my flesh can't heal itself. Um, so so I, walked, I walked around in the flesh being wounded and 
uh, full of baggage and, un and hurt and unhealed because I was walking in the flesh all the time. Um, but when I became born again, I realized that the way people treat me um, has nothing to do with my own personal identity because my identity is now in Jesus Christ. Um, so when people, um, if they spread rumors about me or they lie to my face or they use me spitefully um, or attempt to or they betray me or, or my flesh thinks that they've betrayed me, I don't have to walk around hurt at all. I can still love that person, pray for them, bless them in the name of Jesus Christ, pray blessings over their life. Um, I can still be kind to them and not have any hurt, hurt inside me at all. I can look them in the face and be just as kind the day after they, they attack me as the day before. And that's because the flesh is dead and Jesus is alive. So Jesus in me is doing all that stuff to all that good stuff toward that person. But if I let the flesh come alive, then I'm then I'm going to have to go home and <laughs> curl up in the fetal position and suck my thumb for a while and feel real sorry for myself. You know, because that's all the flesh is capable of. And think a lot of bad thoughts about that person. And the flesh wants to accuse people. The flesh wants to label people. And so if somebody tells you a, a lie, the flesh wants to say, well, they're a liar. You know? But when you're walking in the spirit, if someone tells you a lie, you, your spirit wants to go pray for that person that they will be saved and that they will know Jesus and that Jesus will forgive them for lying to you. And that Jesus will bless them and protect them from all evil. See what a massive difference there is when the flesh is dead. But when your motives are right, you're not doing the wrong thing with so-called good intentions. You know, which is what a lot of people do toward people who, who they believe that they love and they emotionally love the person. But, but in a spiritual way, they're, they're not capable of loving the person. They're only capable of loving them in an emotional way. So they're, they, they end up enabling the person in a bad way and encouraging the person um, to continue doing wrong. A lot of times we think that we have to be with certain people because they're our relatives, um, because they're a part of our family, or because they're a co-worker, we think that we have to go along with things that they're doing or we have to participate in this or that. And you know what? Um, everything in your life is a choice. You always have choices. You never have to do anything. Even God won't make you um, repent and follow Jesus you know, so that you can go to heaven. God himself isn't going to force you into anything. And if God himself will not force you into anything, then there's no way that any other person or circumstance can force you into anything. What you do is always a choice. You're not really being forced. There aren't any real have-tos. There are just imaginary have-tos. <laughs> and so, but when you walk in the Spirit, you'll know what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. You'll know what Jesus and the Father want you to do. You'll be able to hear them speaking to you. Um, you'll be able to hear God speaking to you. And you will know what to do. So anyway, that's all I have to say for now. <laughs> I'm still learning about love. But this year I have been able to um, see big changes in the way that I react to people and the way that I um, treat people because of these little things that the Lord has taught me. And it's also been neat how when people have 
done things to me this year that in you know several years ago would have devastated me this year those same things caused no devastation whatsoever and it was because um, because I was walking in the spirit you know not the whole year because I did go into sin um, for a while there and I was struggling and um, but the Lord has still shown me and he's been with me and it's kind of amazing because this week I could have been really down but you know what I wasn't down at all I felt a little bored a couple of times but I never felt sad and um, that is a miracle that's because of Jesus because he's showing me what real love is it isn't it isn't about focusing on how I feel how my flesh feels it's about um, focusing on what is best for that other person and so anyway God bless you